Good afternoon and thank all of you for being here. I'm obviously very pleased today to be bringing forward our economic snapshot to give Canadians a sense of our current economic situation. Our goal, our continuing goal, is to be transparent with Canadians. We've obviously taken on enormous challenges uh, as a country over the course of the last few months. The federal government has taken a, uh, a position that we need to support Canadians. The Canadian uh, support has been uh, significant uh, across the country, uh, internationally. Uh, we've provided for $212 billion of direct support to Canadians, helping to keep people in jobs and to provide them opportunities to help businesses to bridge a time that's so particularly challenging for all of us. When you look at the scale of our, of our uh, support, it's 14% uh, of our GDP, a very significant response that we know is going to help us to get through this uh, particularly challenging time. The uh, reality is that we've faced an enormous shock to our system. We know that the federal government was in the best position to deliver support at scale and with speed. Our principle has been to get support to people quickly and simply, and we believe that we've been able to satisfy that goal. Now, uh, we know also that the federal government, by taking on this role, by taking on the debt, it meant that Canadians, challenged Canadians, didn't have to take on nearly as much debt in their households, and the cor corporate sector didn't need to take on nearly as much debt. We think it was the appropriate thing for the federal government to do in this time. You'll see that we are working to make sure that we manage our debt prudently. We've uh, decided that we are going to extend the duration of the debt that we put out to the market. Significant change in terms of how we manage that so that we can ensure that we're able to uh, manage that debt prudently on behalf of Canadians. As challenging as this situation is, we are in a position where the cost of our debt is lower than it's ever been before. In fact, our debt, the cost to service our debt, are actually going to be this year $4 billion less than we expected even a year ago. So that's, uh, although challenging, that's obviously a better situation than we could have imagined. So towards the future, we know that this is a very dynamic challenge. Our economic outcomes will be very much about how we successfully manage the health challenge. So we will continue to make decisions in a dynamic way. Our uh, approach will be to think about how we can grow. We will be looking towards a safe restart, negotiating that with provinces, and then focusing on growth. Growth that we know will provide for jobs and opportunity for the future. Je suis très heureux d'être ici aujourd'hui pour uh, annoncer notre portrait économique. C'est clair qu'on a eu un uh, choc énorme dans notre système. Comme gouvernement, nous avons décidé d'avoir uh, un niveau de support extraordinaire pour les Canadiens. Notre niveau de support direct était plus de 200 uh, uh, milliards de dollars. Uh, ça, c'est uh, 212 milliards de dollars pour les Canadiens et les Canadiennes. C'était une, uh, une contribution de 14 de notre PIB. Une, uh, une situation qui est extraordinaire, mais c'était absolument nécessaire pour considérer comment nous pouvons avoir les, les emplois nécessaires en ce moment et le, le pont pour l'avenir pour les gens et pour uh, les, uh, les entreprises. Donc, nous savons que c'était uh, important pour le gouvernement fédéral d'être là pour les Canadiens et les Canadiennes. Uh, ça, c'était important avec notre situation économique. C'était nous qui étions dans la bonne position pour uh, protéger les gens, pour protéger notre économie pour l'avenir. Nous serons être prudents avec notre approche fiscale uh, dans l'avenir, avec notre approche pour, le gérer, pour gérer le dette. Uh, on va avoir une dette qui va être là pour uh, le long terme et ça, ça va diminuer les risques à notre économie. Pour l'avenir, nous savons que c'est une situation très fluide. Nous devons faire nos décisions avec euh, l'information qu'on a. Euh, on est maintenant dans une situation où nous, où nous savons que notre, euh, notre avenir économique est, est vraiment euh, attaché à notre situation de santé. Donc, euh, nous, nous allons continuer avec une approche de, de protéger les gens et euh, après le, le relance sécuritaire, on va essayer d'avoir plus de croissance pour avoir les travail, les emplois dans l'avenir et euh, un niveau de croissance qui va euh, 
assurer qu'on a les opportunités dans le, fut, le futur qui est nécessaire. Donc, avec ça, s'il y a des questions, je suis, je suis à l'aise. Merci, Monsieur le ministre. Donc, nous allons commencer la conférence de presse sous embargo. We will take three questions on the phone, three questions in the room, and we alternate. The minister needs to leave by 1.20, so we're asking you to keep your questions concise. And on that note, we, uh, and, uh, please limit your intervention to a question and a follow-up. And on that note, we will um, start on the phone. Operator. Thank you. The first question is from David Parkinson of the Durban Mail. Please proceed. Uh, good afternoon, Minister. I just wanted to ask, I mean, you, you just expressed the, uh, the, the viewpoint that the approach going forward will be, uh, will be on how we can grow. Can you shed some light on what you, what you envision as the main priorities of a, uh, of a recovery stage plan? And do you have, uh, I mean, it looks as if this fiscal, um, this fiscal snapshot does not include costs for that. Do you have any sense of where those costs might land? And, and may we well be looking at, uh, at, at additional spending in order to, uh, um, to promote a, uh, a recovery and growth phase. Thanks for that question. What we've done in, uh, in this uh, information for Canadians is we've given a sense of what we know and what we don't know. We've uh, provisioned for the things that we've already announced. We've also provisioned for uh, the uh, extension of the wage subsidy, which we think will be important for our ability to get ourselves back to work. Uh, what we uh, believe is most important right now is that we focus on the safe restart of our economy. We're working with provinces in that regard. And from there, dependent on our ability to continue to work together to uh, manage the, the health challenge and get confidence, uh, that then we'll be able to think about how we can best get to the recovery phase. So we've not provisioned for that next phase. Of course, it will be very dependent on our success in going through uh, what we're going through right now. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to Canadians continuing, you know, the efforts that we've all done together so that we can uh, safely and effectively get to uh, a safe restart of the economy. Follow up. Uh, yeah, I, I, can, can you clarify when, when you do get to the point where, uh, where you are making provisions for the next stage, um, how is that going to affect the deficit? We are, we're clearly uh, looking in this phase to make sure that we've, we've provisioned so that we can get people back to work. The goal is to uh, enable us to do that safely so that demand will, will be there for our economy. And of course, the, the level of that demand, the level of our effectiveness together in getting back to work and getting jobs uh, going again uh, will very much determine the, uh, the next steps. And uh, our, our clear goal is that a successful uh, relaunch of the economy will, will put us in a better position to consider those questions uh, when we get there. Uh, the, the nature of the challenge, the, the dynamic nature of the challenge is such that we're, we're not going to uh, make assumptions about the future that we can't know today. Thank you. Next question. Thank you. Merci. La prochaine question est de Vincent Grosso Pouliot de la Presse. La parole est à vous. Please proceed. Oui, bonjour, Monsieur le ministre. Euh, je comprends que vous ne voulez pas trop aller dans l'avenir, mais quand même, pour à partir du mois de septembre, pour les gens qui ne pourront pas retourner au travail, est-ce que c'est l'intention de votre gouvernement de continuer à la fois la PCU et la subvention salariale? Donc, pour les gens qui ne pourront pas profiter de la reprise, Est-ce que c'est votre intention de continuer ces deux programmes-là qui coûtent actuellement chacun 15 milliards de dollars par mois? Merci. C'est une question très importante. Euh, nous, euh, nous, avons une, euh, nous avons fait une provision pour la subvention salariale parce que nous savons que c'est très important d'avoir le, le support pour les entreprises avec le, le relance euh, sécuritaire de notre économie. Donc, on va avoir une, une euh, situation où... Euh, Encore, on va avoir plus des entreprises qui vont utiliser la subvention salariale. Maintenant, il y a une sur quatre euh, employés dans le secteur privé qui est en, dans une situation où leur entreprise est dans la subvention salariale. Donc, ça va, ça va euh, ajouter les gens euh, avec, euh, avec un support comme ça. Mais en même temps, on va avoir une diminution de le, le PCU. On va avoir les deux choses en même temps et un recommencement de notre système d'assurance d'emploi. Donc, on va avoir les, les trois 
programme de support qui va, qui va changer. Le, le PCU va diminuer, la subvention salariale va euh, augmenter euh, l'importance et le système d'assurance d'emploi va recommencer euh, pour le support pour les gens. Euh, ma sous-question, pour le, mais pour la fin de l'année, est-ce que, au fond, vous vous attendez à encore payer au total environ 30 milliards par mois pour soutenir les, pour soutenir l'économie à partir de septembre? Ce que je peux dire, nous, ce que nous savons, on a expliqué que ce que nous savons en ce moment dans notre euh, portrait économique, euh, et euh, on, on va avoir, j'espère, une, une relance sécuritaire, et de cette façon, on peut avoir plus d'informations pour faire des prévisions euh, avec, euh, avec la prochaine étape. Mais maintenant, nous devons travailler ensemble pour une, une relance sécuritaire. Et de cette façon, on va, on va être dans une meilleure position pour, pour l'avenir. Merci. Prochaine question. Thank you. Merci. The next question is from Patrick Detour of the Global Mail. Please proceed. Uh, thanks for taking our questions, Minister. Uh, quickly on fiscal anchor, there, there's no mention of a fiscal anchor uh, in the document released today. So two questions. <clears throat> Why is that? And then what should Canadians expect long term of the government's intention uh, on debt levels? Well, right now is really very much the time to be thinking about people and jobs. We've had an enormous dislocation in, uh, in our country over the last few months. We've been thinking about how we can make sure that those supports are there appropriately. The investments that we've made have been absolutely essential to protect jobs for now and to create a bridge to the future. Uh, we will, of course, be uh, intending to, to talk more about what the path forward is in the fall when we have more information. Uh, right now, we're very focused on how we can ensure that we continue the investments necessary to get people back to work so that we have a strong economy, so that we have good jobs, so that we will be able to have the, uh, the right approach to managing our economy over the long term. In the interim, we will be very prudent in how we manage the debt. We've said that we are going to significantly increase our focus on issuing long-term bonds. We're going to go from 14% to 26% of our, of our bond issuances will be for the long term. And that gives us a sense of, uh, of the advantage in the current low interest rate environment that we can, we can manage this debt in a, um, in a way that uh, allows us to get to the next steps. Thanks. We will now be switching to the room. Um, so when you ask your question, please state your name in your media. And we will start by my right and then go to my left. Bonjour, M. Morneau, Christian Noël de Radio-Canada. C'est Echo. je vais essayer de parler lentement. Euh, vous avez quitté le secteur privé pour devenir ministre des Finances, et là, vous vous retrouvez dans une situation où vous avez le plus grand déficit de l'histoire du Canada avec votre nom dessus. Vous vous sentez comment? C'était quoi l'autre choix? Donc, nous sommes vraiment dans une situation extraordinaire où c'est absolument nécessaire de, de protéger les gens, de protéger les emplois pour l'avenir de notre, de notre pays, de notre économie. Donc, nous avons fait les investissements parce que c'était nécessaire et de cette façon, on va avoir une économie dans l'avenir pour, euh, pour euh, les opportunités dans l'avenir pour nous et pour nos enfants. Euh, 343 milliards de déficit, je présume que ce n'est pas un plancher. Ça pourrait descendre encore plus bas si l'économie va moins bien, si le virus revient. Quand vous regardez dans vos lunettes d'approche, vous voyez la relance. Pour équilibrer tout ça, est-ce qu'il faudra couper dans les services ou hausser les impôts? Pour nous, maintenant, nous savons que c'est nécessaire de considérer comment nous pouvons assurer l'économie dans l'avenir. Et de cette façon, c'est nécessaire de considérer le niveau de croissance. On doit faire des investissements pour le niveau de croissance dans notre économie. Avec cette approche, on va avoir plus de, des emplois, on va avoir plus des opportunités, on va avoir euh, les entreprises avec plus de possibilités. Donc, notre approche va être les investissements dans l'avenir et pas les, les coupures et pas les, euh, les changements dans notre système des impôts. Vraiment, c'est un temps pour considérer comment 
on peut assurer un niveau de croissance. Uh, Glenn McGregor, CTV News. Uh, Minister, thank I, you for taking I'm care. sorry, we were going to just over switch to the other, but we'll get back to you right after. What? So, Mr. Eakin? Microphone's over here too, Glenn. <laughs> I, if you look over, you can see his legs. You can see the bottom of his legs. Here we are. Uh, David Aiken, Global News. It's all new, these, these proceedings. Uh, I want to talk about the, uh, the wage subsidy. There's a substantial amount of money uh, planned to spend on the wage subsidy in this outlook. And I just want to be clear here. I think the wage subsidy, as we knew it before we came in, uh, that program was going to run till August. So is it your intention that at some point there will be an announcement that it may run past August? And we'll hear about those details later. Do I understand that kind of correctly? Our sense is that the, the important thing we need to be focusing on right now is the safe restart of our economy. We know that the wage support provides, uh, the wage subsidy provides support for, for businesses, but it provides support for jobs that will allow us to get back to work. So what we've done in the, uh, in the snapshot is we've given a sense of the provision we've put against the uh, wage subsidy extension. We've already announced that that extension is important. We've gone out and done consultations with the private sector. We've heard from parliamentarians. We've heard from people across the country. And we know that there's some things that we need to change to make sure that, that helps us to get back to work. We need to reduce disincentives to growth. We need to make sure the subsidy is appropriate for the challenges facing enterprises in, in actually rehiring and getting people back to work. So we will have more to say on that in the, in, the, in the very near term as we finalize those details and how it can be used to help us to get back to work, to, to have the jobs that we want and the opportunities that we need. And uh, just, uh, I guess, a bit of a process question. We have a snapshot today, and in that is a commitment to do a update in the fall. Is it the intention of your government to table a budget in this fiscal year? We, we've been... Uh, clear that we, we can only use the information that we believe that we actually have. The snapshot today is telling people what we know. It's giving a good sense of what we think our situation is through until March 31st, 2021. Our intention is to provide uh, a next step, uh, an economic update or a budget in the fall uh, at, that's appropriate at that time based on our situation. Of course, we're in a dynamic situation, so I will have more to say on exactly the uh, format and the timing of that uh, in the fall. Thank you. Uh, Glenn McGregor, CTV News. Uh, Minister, your officials here discussed the possibility that the uh, economy's rebound could be gradual and uneven, and they predict a uh, sharper decline in GDP, 9.6%, worse than the projections, uh, the, your fiscal projections are based on, uh, much worse than the average of the private sector uh, projections. Uh, and also in this document, uh, they say this, that is exactly what's happening. The worst is behind us, but recovery will be gradual and uneven. Do you concede that the numbers are probably uh, worse than your fiscal projection is based on? I think Canadians know that we are in a situation where the uh, ability to forecast is extremely difficult. We saw from the forecasters that we, the private sector forecasters that we asked to help us, that there was a very wide range in perspectives. I was on a call this morning with uh, finance ministers from the G20, and we can see all of us that it's, it's hard to know where we will be in a month or two months or in six months. What we know for sure, that if Canadians work together, we can continue on what we've seen as a month-by-month a -month improvement of our situation. And our economic outcomes will be related to our success in working together on our, on our health challenge. Uh, in that regard, I'm cautiously optimistic that we've been successful in the approach that we've taken so far, but we'll need to work together to get to a positive economic outcome in the, in the coming months. Uh, I'm going to ask you to forecast uh, anyway, because at every budget and fiscal update, we ask you the same question. When do you think your government will finally balance the books? What year will that be in? Uh, I, th I think um, that uh, it's good that you're programmed to ask the same question uh, every time. Uh, but what I can tell you is that I'm not programmed in that way. Right now, it is clear that we are in a very different situation that we've been in in the past. We're in a situation where we've made extraordinary investments to protect Canadians. Those were the right things to do at the time that we faced. 
We need to find a way to get back to work in a way that's, that's safe so that we can actually continue to have opportunities in this country. We're committed to making those investments, those investments in growth. That will be the thing that will help our economy to be more healthy and for us to continue on a, on a fiscally prudent path. Thank you. Going back on the phone, operator. Thank you. Once again, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad if you have a question. De nouveau, n'hésitez pas à appuyer sur l'étoile 1 pour toute question. The next question is from Raoul Vedina of Epoch Times. Please proceed. Uh, yes, uh, hello, uh, Minister uh, Morneau. Um, how can you, how do you explain the, the highest unemployment rate uh, in the G7 according to the OECD? Does that, uh, is that a reflection of the effectiveness of the uh, program spending? Uh, I think it's important to, uh, to look at where we are right now. What we're seeing is that the, uh, the approach that we've taken, the approach of supporting people with our CERB, and the, uh, the wage subsidy approach is having the results that we were hoping for. We're seeing more and more firms go on to the wage subsidy. Uh, now about 3 million people working at about 25% of the private sector firms in our country that are uh, on that wage subsidy. So that is exactly as we were hoping uh, would happen. Uh, our intent is to try to encourage firms to use that program to get themselves uh, back to work, and that will mean more jobs, more opportunities. Uh, I think that Canada, based on our strong fiscal position going into this, as well as our, our level of support for people, uh, we should be proud of where we're at. And we, uh, we're facing up to an extreme challenge, but we're doing it in a way that I think shows that we can work together to get to a better place. So would you say it's, a, it's a, just maybe a question of poor timing and in terms of when the uh, OECD published this and you expect the, uh, the jobs picture to get much better relative to the other G7? I think what we can expect is that the Canadian government will continue to take an approach that supports Canadians, that supports jobs, and that will be an important way for us to get back to a, a strong position. I'm um, looking at the numbers that shows that our, our investments have been uh, among the largest among G7 and among G20 countries, and we think that's entirely appropriate to make sure that we can use our strong fiscal position at a time of extreme challenge for Canadians. Thank you. We will be now going back in the room to my left. Maura. Thank you. Uh, Maura Forrest, Politico. I had another Can question. Can you go a little closer to the microphone? Oh, sorry. Can you hear me better now? A little bit. Um, I had another question about the wage subsidy. Uh, to date, I believe there's been about $18 billion paid out through the wage subsidy. You're now projecting $82 billion for an extension to the end of August. How are you going to make up that difference? That's, you know, a huge difference in, in what we've seen paid out to date versus what you're now projecting. What we're, what we're showing in the economic snapshot is that uh, we, uh, we believe the wage subsidy is a very important program for us getting back to work, creating jobs. Uh, what we'll be talking about in the, in the next short while is how we're going to change that program so that it, it enables firms to have the opportunity to continue growing out of their challenge, getting the support that they need, the appropriate support, and uh, doing that in a way that, that uh, recognizes that we will continue to face challenges for a period of time. So there will be more details on that coming, but we thought it was most transparent for us to provide that provision in the snapshot so people could see that we are going to continue to support uh, Canadians, to support jobs, to get us to the next step. Okay, thank you. And um, I'm also wondering if there's a way for Canada to climb out of this fiscal hole without raising taxes. We think that raising taxes would be exactly the wrong ex response to dealing with this sort of challenge. We want to actually increase demand, demand from, from people. We want to ensure that we put uh, money into the economy, and that's why we've been making investments. So uh, we, uh, we believe that the focus on growth is a place that we should be focusing. We should be trying to grow our economy, which of course will grow jobs and create opportunities for the future. Thank you. Next question. Oui, bonjour, Catherine Lévesque, La Presse canadienne. J'avais en fait exactement la même question que Maura, mais j'aimerais vous entendre en français. 
la subvention salariale, comme vous savez, est moins populaire que prévu. Vous avez juste donné 18 milliards, euh, en, ben, juste, quand même 18 milliards jusqu'à maintenant. Là, vous prévoyez 82 milliards. Comment allez-vous vous rendre à ce moment-là? Qu'est-ce qu'on doit en comprendre là, pour les prochains mois? Nous pensons que la subvention salariale est très importante pour la, la situation que nous, sommes, nous, nous trouvons aujourd'hui. Nous voulons avoir une relance sécuritaire. Et ça veut dire qu'on doit avoir le support pour les entreprises pour, euh, pour ajouter les employés nécessaires. Donc, euh, avec la subvention salariale, avec une, euh, une cha les, quelques changements dans le, le programme, on va avoir plus de, de compagnies, plus des entreprises qui ont... Uh, qui ont la possibilité d'utiliser la subvention salariale. Ça va améliorer notre situation, améliorer notre économie. Et uh, maintenant, on a une sur quatre employés dans le secteur privé qui est dans une compagnie qui, uh, qui est en train d'utiliser la subvention salariale. Nous pensons que ça, le nombre des compagnies va uh, augmenter dans les, uh, dans les prochains jours avec nos changements. Et puis, en poursuivant sur la même lignée, on comprend que, donc, vous voulez éventuellement euh, diminuer les gens euh, qui, qui utilisent la PCU, mais s'il y a une deuxième ou une troisième, même une quatrième vague, qu'est-ce qui va arriver avec les gens qui perdent leur emploi? Est-ce qu'il faut en comprendre qu'il y aura, qu'ils devront se tourner vers l'assurance-emploi? Et qu'est-ce que vous prévoyez pour euh, aider ces, ces gens-là? Nous savons que la situation est très fluide. Uh, donc, notre approche était uh, de faire des décisions avec l'information qu'on a. Uh, donc, uh, maintenant, nous pensons que la prestation canadienne d'urgence va diminuer en importance. Notre système d'assurance d'emploi va augmenter en importance et la subvention salariale va être beaucoup plus importante pour, euh, pour le niveau de support pour les entreprises, pour euh, ajouter les emplois. Nous pensons qu'avec une, une relance sécuritaire, on, on va avoir une situation où, où on va avoir plus, plus en plus de, des emplois dans les, dans les mois prochains. Et euh, ça, c'est une approche qui est consistant avec, euh, avec notre situation maintenant, avec l'information qu'on a. Thank you. Next question. Hello. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay. So um, you've made a couple of references um, to the fact that, uh, that uh, child care is absolutely essential to having a full workforce um, and to having, to having people available to go back to work. Um, and, uh, but I don't s see anything in there that would actually make that happen. And here we have $82 billion set aside for a wage subsidy without a workforce that's fully available. So how do you propose to fix that? First of all, just let me acknowledge the, uh, the question. We've been uh, very clear that having access to child care is going to be critically important for us to, to get back to work. Uh, women have been harder hit through the course of this pandemic and our measures therefore need to consider that challenge. We're in the midst of discussions with the provinces about a safe restart approach. And in that, there's, there's seven things that we've said are, are really important. So for getting back to work, we know that child care is critically important. We know that there needs to be some sort of uh, sick leave during this period of COVID-19 so that if people are sick, they can be off work. We know that municipalities need to have the kind of resources they need for transit systems to get people to and from work. We also know that we need to protect ourselves as we get back to work. So we need to have the healthcare system working as, as it needs to work, as well as mental health support for people. We need to make sure vulnerable people, people in old age homes or, or in shelters, that they are, that they are uh, protected as we, as we move forward. We need to have the proper uh, personal protective equipment. So that's, that's always going to be uh, you know, critically important as we move to the, to the future. So, so these are the things that we're working on with provinces, and uh, I'm encouraging provinces to, uh, to get to the table, uh, make sure that uh, we get to a, that safe restart as rapidly as possible. Okay, and just to follow up on, on, on um, some vulnerable populations, um, the, the CERB has, has made sure that, the, that many um, low-income workers have not fallen through the cracks, um, but now you're proposing to switch that system over to employment insurance, which has been shown in the past to miss many, many people. So how do you make sure that we do have an inclusive system going forward? One of the reflections we have, having gone through this pandemic, is that there's, there's clearly challenges that we, we need to face up to. We see challenges in our long-term care 
uh, centers. We see challenges in our employment insurance system. So we are working uh, this summer to think about how we can make sure that we we get our, uh, our systems working in a way that they can support Canadians. We know that as we transition back to the employment insurance system, we'll need to think about how we uh, support people through other programs like the wage subsidy. Uh, so uh, we are working on that. Uh, the uh, wage subsidy discussions are far advanced. There'll be more details in the near term. And we'll continue to be supporting Canadians with, uh, with more details on how that will work uh, in, the, in the coming weeks or, or months. And our last question. Thank you, Minister, for taking my question. Uh, Kelsey Johnson with Reuters. You mentioned in the document that Canada is looking at issuing unprecedented levels of longer-term bonds. I'm wondering, does that mean very long-term bonds? Is Canada looking at issuing a 50-year bond or a 100-year bond? We, we know that uh, we need to very carefully manage uh, our debt, and there's there's a number of things we're thinking about as we do that. We're thinking about the duration of our debt to protect ourselves from what they call rollover risk. So in that regard, we're increasing the amount of debt that we issue that's 10 years and 30 years long. Uh, we know that we need to manage the cost of that debt. As you put longer-term debt out there, it's, it's more expensive. So we're, we're trying to make sure we manage that. And finally, we want healthy uh, debt markets. So we're, we're always considering the fact that the government has an important role to play in the actual uh, markets, the debt markets. Uh, we will continue to consult with market participants on how we move forward with our debt management strategy. And uh, as we see opportunities for our a debt management strategy to consider uh, those three factors and, and uh, potentially have longer dated uh, debt, we will, uh, we will consider those opportunities. For now, what's clear is we're significantly increasing our longer term debt to manage the situation at a time where the cost of debt is uh, particularly low. It's, it's remarkable that we've uh, issued this much debt, yet our actual debt charges this year are going to be $4 billion less than we even thought they were going to be a year ago. So the cost of that debt is manageable. Now we need to think about how we grow and create opportunities so that we can have long-term uh, sustainable management of this, this shock to our system. And as a follow-up, I, I believe in French you've said a couple of times that the plan is to phase out the CERB and put people back on EI. Is that how you plan to force businesses to pick up your wage subsidy by getting rid of the CERB? And what happens if those jobs just aren't there? We, uh, we recognize that the, uh, the best way to help to create jobs, to maintain jobs, is to provide the wage subsidy for businesses so they can get back to work. And uh, our intent is to take away any disincentives for them to bring people back to work. That's the changes we're making to the wage subsidy uh, as we speak, which will be announced in the, in the near term. Uh, our, our view is that we need to, over, over, over the next little while, make sure that our employment insurance is back up and, and running, uh, but that we continue to support people in a way that uh, gives them confidence that, uh, that they'll be able to provide for themselves and their families. It's, it's not easy. and We're in challenging times. Uh, we're going to make sure that we support people to get through these challenging times because we know that's the right thing to do. Thank you. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thanks very much.